السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سيدي وي فيل ذات وي ستارتد ذس واي تو ليت and the arrival of Imam Mahdi is making us worried that we may not be pure enough to be with him. Do we have a chance? Everyone has a chance inshaAllah that if we don't make it with our body, the, uh, the love and the intention is then to make it with the soul. The soul will be in service. That we described many times the great number of calamities in the last days is why? Because Allah wants them to be with Sayyidina Mahdi and if their physicality can't make it, their spirituality and their soul will render itself to be of service. So awliya and those who have been given that authority many times will recruit from the grave, from people whom have died and passed away. And they'll be given an opportunity in which to serve, to purify their lights, increase the rank of their lights so that they give their allegiance to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and that to serve the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad So when these calamities come and you see hundred thousand people go earthquakes the awliya are, are already there in those areas recruiting. That as soon as a body goes that soul is fresh and looking as if it doesn't understand what just happened. At that moment they'll be recruited into the way of Sayyidina Mahdi and that when they find the level of oppression that was put upon them and their loved ones, Allah will allow them the state of vengeance, that their purification so fast and so powerful that they're shaheed and Allah give them a permission to go after and to seek revenge for what was done wrong and who did that wrong. And there will be no ease upon this earth for those whom are oppressing, that whether in physicality they'll be punished or more powerful Allah begin to release through spirituality from unseen people, souls and beings to go after every zalim. Nothing is missed by Allah people just don't see it. People say, <coughs> how that happens? And then you say, As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. See sometimes when they testify that one of them testified and he came to a committee and he says, you don't know I can't sleep. You people told me to do these things and to kill these people with, with uh, no mercy and did horrible things. I can't sleep a single night, I'm haunted. They come to me, they come in my vision, they torment me. So Allah is quick to punish that nothing is forgotten, no oppression will, be, will, will, will not be answered, it will be answered. But people may not see it at the time. But this is a time in which people whom prepare themselves and have the correct intention that they want to be with Sayyidina Mahdi InshaAllah Allah will make them to be with Sayyidina Mahdi whether in their physicality or in their ruhaniyat and in their spirituality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah <coughs> Sayyidi, what is the wisdom of Sham Sharif being on fire right now knowing that it represents the station of awliya? 
The wisdom is that it has to be cleaned. <clears throat> we said that in the talk that when people heard these talks 30 years ago, many said they were moved to Shah al Sharif and Mawlana Shaykh later would give sobats that everything will be brought down, these whole regions will be brought down. None of these buildings will be present in the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi And when awliya look in the area they can see the layer in which they're already destroyed. One layer you see them physically standing, through their firasa they can see all the buildings that have been brought down and like fire just sort of rubble. All of these will be brought down and that when the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi comes and the existence in the time of being with Sayyidina Mahdi Allah will command the jinn to rebuild according to how Allah wants that region to be rebuilt. And that overnight by the power that Allah give to the jinn nations. But this nation that we built and these buildings that people have built will all be brought down. So the reality of Shah Masharif is then these are the levels, these are the highly purified areas that must be cleaned first. So that's why we, we are seeing the extent of these difficulties and Turkey will be immense battles. The Bani Asrar will be entering in and the whole region will be under fire and destruction. Shah Sharif all of the Arabian areas all of them will be under fire and destruction. That's why the importance is a state within ourselves not a location. Nobody can run to a location and think they'd be safe by virtue of a location other than the maqams of uh, holy people in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad but the state in which they're asking is for ourselves to be from Mecca, from Medina and Shaykh Sharif within our being and that we carry that reality inshaAllah within our being, in our, in our reality. As a result then we walk in that state inshaAllah. You just answered one of the questions I was about to ask Sayyidi. <laughs> Great. And it doesn't take but one day for Allah to change the servant. This is not a prison in which you serve 30 years, that this is the state in which you enter in, the one whom has himma and zeal to improve themselves, Allah can improve them in a day, in two days. It's not a time sentence of jail which I have to serve this many years to achieve. It's just the nafs of people makes it like that. The nafs of people that they don't want to listen, they don't want to purify themselves and not until a couple beating comes then they want to do something. But there are people whom if they have a himma and a zeal that they go out and they conquer, they do what they can and immediately they're growing very fast and it's not a matter of the time that they put within it. Those whom coming now they see the news that should be a validation enough because when everything was beautiful and 25 years ago when Mawlana would talk these talks people were very weary and they said, oh this is all the time these discussions. But now don't say it's all the time, there's never been a time in which banks are collapsing and they look like they're planning on collapsing it. Wars are, are everywhere, they want to attack huge nations, not a small nation. They started with, you know, maybe the Congo but they're now coming after Russia. That's not going to be something small and he's not going to go away. I mean that becomes Jang -e Jahan, these are the world wars that will begin to open upon this earth. So these are not small states but it requires people not to be heedless, wake up. Wake up and build yourself, take care of your faith, take care of the love that you have within your heart inshaAllah to achieve these realities and to achieve these states inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi 
If Allah lives in the heart of the believers, does He not live in the heart of disbelievers? Or rather, is He more veiled? Or does shaitan live there? See, I don't know this philosophy stuff. Allah owns all creation. But they have not illuminated themselves within that reality and Allah owns all souls, all souls are pure. So to the souls they, they can't be touched, the soul belongs to the heavens. But within that being you have creatures living within you, not one, you're not in control of yourself. You have a devil inside you, you have jinn inside you. If you walk around in the mall you have many jinns inside you. Your, your soul is held captive in the dungeon of your reality. Allah owns that light of the soul, can be killed. It can be tortured by the bad character and people lend themselves to devils and they go out like a bus and ask devils to enter by what they do of their actions. So tariqahs come and religion comes to remind people, get those devils out and empower your soul, eat right, do right and you'll see right. And that's why Islamic law is natural law. Live your life according to the standards of God and not according to the standards of mankind. Orient yourself in the direction of the heavens and not in the direction of your desires. So the orientation is this and that. That's why we have a qibla. Now more than ever people understand what that means. Why, why, why would this nation have to have an orientation and a qibla? Allah knows in the last days they would confuse people with their orientation. It means orient yourself towards hell, then begin to look and dress like that. But Allah gave to us, no, no you're a nation that always orients yourself towards Mecca, towards Allah and towards the heavens of what the heaven wants for you, how you dress according to the heavens, how you act according to the heavens, how you eat according to the heavens, how you fight according to the heavens, everything according to the orientation of heavens and paradises. So they shouldn't be a confused nation about their orientation, only people confuse is when they don't have a qibla and a direction. Then somebody come and said, now you're a goat. Then they begin to orient themselves to being a goat, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa So in this journey to loving our beloved Prophet so then we first have to have love for all awliya and all the beautiful shaykhs, is that correct? You have to have love for Prophet and ask for guidance. And as a result of guidance Allah guides you to the shaykh that's responsible to take you into the presence of Prophet Because how do you know who are awliya? There's that guy on the, on the YouTube bold and has always a big seven up in front of him talking about how his people's face is on the moon and <laughs> that he's Sayyidina Mahdi, he's Dajjal, he's a man of deceit. So the orientation is to Allah and love of Prophet that you don't go wrong, you make your salawat durood and say, Ya Rabbi guide me to this ishq and muhabbat. Then when you hear these teachings of ishq and muhabbat then you should be understanding what guidance is. The guidance should be talking and validating this love and this character. Because many may come and talk and then they talk all about Allah. But you listen, listen, listen because we, we're good at trying to pick up the channels. Say this is really nothing other than the occasional salawat that they have to say, if they quote a hadith then they have to say wasallam. But the overwhelming talk is not about Prophet wasallam. So that, that is undesirous. The desirable nature is that leave 
you thinking knowing about Allah, leave that for Prophet And you talk about your shaykhs and Sayyidina Muhammad because that's achievable. That when you have this ishq and this love you are in the presence of your shaykh. So you say, your shaykh, my Mawlana, my, ta- my shaykh taught me this. And if they raise you up and keep you in the presence of Prophet then you talk about your master and leave your master to talk about his master, his supreme leader, his supreme creator. So we can by this teaching you can pick up when the person has been trained, their adab is correct. Then they want to bring people to the love and the ishq of Prophet and they talk much about it. And that's why people whom have studied with us, they have an immense love. They understand every holy month and how it relates to Prophet how it relates to holy companions, how it relates to Ahlul probably thousand times more than when they step through the first day. And they understand every nat and nasheed in a completely different understanding. Well this is the the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and as a result of that they, they, they draw clear and very near to that presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Then they can distinguish who are the Muhammadan guides. We said before some people say they're very high level shaykhs but they don't give even the common courtesy of a Walaykum As Salaam. So, These are now titles that people seem to have inherited and this is good for them. But the characteristic and the khuluq is important. The the characteristic of awliya is everything. The kindness, the love, the ishq, the muhabbat and that their job is to capture people from shaitan. Not to open the door and push people towards shaitan but to bring everybody back, talk in a way in which to attract people. Then those other people say, oh everything is so soft and nice with you, you, you're not following sharia. I'm talking about you're not following sharia. We're not here to condemn people. The role of awliya and those whom have been trained by awliyaullah is that we're at the bottom gate to catch everything. Where Mawlana Shaykh said, make the gate as wide as possible. And they went to the bazaar and they put their hands from one gate to the other hand and they connected hands and they said, today we're going to recite whoever passes we're going to pray for them, Allah grant them paradise. This was the character that was taught to us is, is to make it wide for people to come, leave judgment for Allah but you want to make it very restricted and then they say, do like this, do like this, this is a kafir, this is like this, this, this is not going to work. You're going to make the gate so small that not even you and your family will fit through it. So yeah, if you're watching this channel follow this teaching, don't have to ask philosophy questions and who to look for. If you don't get it by now then the question's irrelevant to you. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as So is the requirement for a spiritual opening good character? 100% Prophet described there are people whom their amal is weak but their khuluq is strong. And by means of their character Allah may grant them many openings. So definitely when the character that's the whole gist, adab yahu and, and the, the saying from Prophet I've been sent adab and rabbi fa ahsanu fi tahdeeb. I've been sent to perfect the character of people, not make them all judges and hefs of Qur'an and, and to be uh, sharia judges. That, that is in its place but for the mass of people Islam's message is, is manners. But because of this sect of extremists they want to make everybody like if they're Islamic judges. You know Islamic jurisprudence is like you're going to law school, you have to go to law school and study some 
you know, many years to come out with that degree. And then you specialize, so when I have a problem I go to a lawyer and he solves the problem. But everybody in society is not supposed to be a lawyer. But this understanding Bab al is open for everybody. So everybody is going to be a, a, a alias lawyer or, or, or a fake lawyer and that's the danger. Because a whole bunch of these crazy people they go to the park and they start giving out law de decrees to everybody who's walking in the park yelling at them, screaming at them because they memorize three fiqhs and they're going to attack this one, attack that one. That on the outside that looks like this is our Supreme Court, the park in London. That ten lunatics or giving out jurisprudence, yelling, screaming, gangster, thuggish character and this is the Islamic Supreme Court. People look, these people are the training? No. That we have a system more deeper than the Western system. That the trained muftis, the ulama, big awliyaullah, they are the Islamic hukum, the governments and the Islamic law. And common people study adab. Your fikr for your salah and your basic fikr that the shaykhs are teaching by following by example is enough for you. Pray like them, eat like them, talk like them, act like them, you learn sharia. But you and me we magnify adab and manners. When we have good adab, good manners the sharia becomes natural for you. So when you walk in the park your manners think, this is horrific. Why are they yelling like this? And you feel uncomfortable and you leave. Well you didn't need to study sharia to understand that, your manners would have taught you that. But this ma'ab of ishtiba and the, the everybody has the right to make a fatwa, somebody comes in two weeks into Islam, they, they teach them, yeah make your fatwas, learn these three hadiths and now go and fight people about it. It's horrible, it's horrible on the image they give people because people are not trained in manners anymore, they're actually trained in how to be rude and aggressive to people and it's not Islam, it's not the way and Allah alhamdulillah safeguards Islam with the tariqahs and the, the shaykhs of tariqah they teach the manners and that is the, the fuel for the mass of society is learn the manners, learn the good character. Leave jurisprudence for the lawyers of which you're not and if you're going to go study the law you go get your degree and at that time you come out with a degree and uh, God save you from arrogance and uh, inshaAllah being harsh, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain the red light that Imam Mahdi has dressed awliya with that Sayyidi spoke about yesterday? Sure you have to get the Lataif Aqal book and you have to read about the levels of the heart and uh, the importance of the levels because that describes these important colors and the variation of the hue of colors, that yellow and what it represents and what it represents for the angels, for the holy companions, for the prophets of Allah because the lataif al-qalb is about the house of Allah it's about the heart. And in Allah's house are the Nabiin you'll learn about, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. That includes the angels and the jinn because they're of that same category, that they are the messengers of Allah delivering the message from the heavens. So all of these are in the house of Allah and that's why it's structured in layers that you go to the qalb and it'll talk about the, the prophetic reality of the qalb, the angelic reality of the qalb, the, the holy companion reality of the qalb. So that was the importance of, of getting the book and what re red represents. That red represents in our world blood war and struggle inshaAllah. But uh, get the book, read the, the chapter or go to the website nurmuhammad.com and educate ourselves on the levels of the heart and click on the qalb and the sir and read from the qalb and the sir 
inshaAllah and then we can go into that, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoom wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila shrafi al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashayikhina fi tariqatil ashbandiyatil aliyah wa sa'ira wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.